it's time to review the questions and problems. Here's the first one. This was 3 and 7. 43 minus 27. So we're starting in the ones column. This is the ones. Remember we talked about this before. And because there are only three in the ones column, and we needed seven, we had to come over here to the 40 and take 10 away from 40 and share it with the three. And that makes 13. And I used my crayon to show you that this is a subtraction problem with mat a minus, but it's too fat. So I had to write it again so you could see it clearly. My crayon was too fat. So 13 minus 7 is 6, because 6 plus 6 is 12, and if you added one more number to 6, you would get 13, and that would make it a 7. A 6 and a 7 is 13. So now we've solved the problem of the 3 and the 7. Now we need to come over here and look and see what's left. We took away from the 40 and made it 30, and here is a 20. We know we don't need to do any more sharing or borrowing, so we're taking the 2 from the 3 or the 20 from the 30, and we get 1 left over. So our total number left is 16. And again, another subtraction problem. This one's a little simpler because this 3 is less than the 9. So when we take away from this 9, we're left with 6. And this is a little tricky because this isn't 10, this is 7, or 70, and this number is 109. So in the tens column, there's nothing. So we could say that the 7 is trying to be taken away from the nothing in the tens column. And if you borrowed or shared from the hundreds column and took all those hundreds away and put them right here, and made this 100 for the 70, you would still have the same problem. This is still essentially 10 take away the seven. And that's an easy enough problem to do because we can leave our 10 fingers out and take away three and have seven. So 36 is what's left over when we take 73 from 109. Now the next problem I forgot was an addition problem. So started a subtracting, and then I corrected it. This is 244 plus 317. 4 plus 7 is how we're going to start, always starting with the smallest common column of numbers first. 7 plus 3 is 10, and I have that memorized. So then I add one more, and I know I get 11 and I carry the one of the 11 where it goes into the tens column. It doesn't go down in the answer because I haven't added up the rest of my tens yet. This is 40 plus 10 plus 10 is 60. Four, five, six. 244 plus 316. Nothing carries from here because it's 60. It doesn't go into the hundreds. And now 200 plus 300 is 500. 561 is the answer to this problem. Here comes the trickiest problem of them all, so I didn't finish it. Once again, I'm starting in the ones column here, and I see that my three is too small to take the five from. So I need to borrow or share from the tens column. And so I started. I crossed off my 10, and when I took it away, I was left with nothing. And I gave that 10 to the three, and the three was so grateful, it said, thank you, I'm 13. Now I can take my five away from 13, no problem. I take away the three, and then two, and I have eight. Now I come over here to my 20, and it wants to be taken from the tens column in 213, but there's nothing left. And even if I didn't 
share from the tens column in 213, there wouldn't be enough. There's only 10. There was only 10 to start with. So 20 can't be taken from 10. I need help from 200. So I'm taking away 100 from 200. That leaves behind 100. And now I'm going to add my 100 over here. This has become 100 and not 10 any longer. But it still operates like that in terms of the subtraction. This is the same thing as 10 minus 2 because 100 minus 20 is the same as 10 minus 2 in this column. It's going to be another 8. But it's not a single 8. This is 80. This is something 88. What is it? 1, take away 1. This is 100, take away 100. I only have 100 left here now. This is a big fat 0. And all I have is 88. But I know that that's not just an 8. And that's the most important part about this whole sharing and carrying concept is that this is not a 1. It's a 10. This is not a 2. It's a 20. And we have to remember that when we're thinking about how these things operate. And number 5 was addition. So we had 8 plus 9. I know that 8 plus 8 is 16. So I know I just had to add one more to make it 8 plus 9. And that's 17. I have to carry the 1 because the 1 isn't 1, it's 10. And I have to put it in the right column. It goes into the tens column, and there it's living. Now I'm adding 4 plus 3 plus 1, and I have 8. It's the same as 4 plus 4. Now 8 isn't bigger than 10. It's 80. This 8 is 80. And it's not going to take me over into the hundreds. There was no carrying over. So it stays as 87, and then I have to add my 6 and my 4, and I get a big number. Some people say this as 1087, but that's a little confusing. Really, what this number is, is 1087, because there's nothing in the, ten, in the hundreds column. The hundreds column got bumped all the way over to the thousands because of how many hundreds there were. Just like when we talked about those sheaves of grain, the single sheaf becomes broken down into a sack and then 10 sacks fits in a crate and 10 crates fits in a wagon. So this would be a wagon load of grain and then this is 80 bags and seven sheaves. So that's another way to think about it. If you can remember those stories about the sheaves and then even further back into second grade about the planks and we use those popsicle sticks. All right, that's the end of our math practice and now it is time to review the story.